think the world is much more interconnected and much more mobile. And in my view also nationalism is in a way a response to that, that the world is very mobile, it's too mobile perhaps, too um, non-secure. And nationalism brings back the security, okay, at the end of the day we all have to belong somewhere. So I think the optimistic narrative is that nationalism is, is emerging stronger but more plural. So we still need to, to, to find roots for ourselves today in a, such a diverse and interconnected world, but we find them by opening up and, and interacting, interacting with diversity and bringing it in. Um, and nationalism, in my view, is still uh, necessary because the nation is the right size in a way. It's bigger than the family and it's smaller than the world or, or a world region like, for instance, Europe, the European Union, that cannot provide this feeling of closeness or of warmth or of immediacy that the nation can provide. Now, the pessimistic narrative is one that says, OK, all these socioeconomic changes are happening and we have lost control and citizens feel they have lost completely control of their lives, their work, their welfare, their future. Um, particularly in Europe, there is this narrative that we are facing now, one of the first generations, the current 30 years old, are this uh, one of the first generations that are going to be worse off than their parents in the post-World War um, history or even in, in you know, the last century. So there's something wrong, there's something that we did wrong, we opened up too much and thus we have to create new borders, we have to close ourselves and protect ourselves. And if we protect ourselves we can go back to this narrative of growth and development of if you want the boom years of uh, you know of the 60s and 70s. I think these idealizations of the past uh, you know I, exactly our idealization that the past was not um, free of problems and uh, th th there were perhaps different problems. Second is uh, you cannot go back to the future you can only go forward to the future and we cannot turn the clock back. I definitely think nationalism and globalization can coexist. Uh, you cannot avoid nationalism, so you have to take it critically. But, but I think what, what is positive today is that even more people have both the reason and the opportunity to interact. So you're an engineer, you're, uh, but even if you're a, you do a clerical job or whatever, and your company most likely will work with companies abroad, um, and, and if you work in the public sector, you'll have to, do, to deal with foreigners, so suddenly it becomes relevant to you. I think now, compared to 20, 30 years ago, where many people could say it's not relevant because it's not in... I remember also with my own friends from university, they would say, you know, the EU is not relevant for me. Uh, I don't uh, apply for any EU subsidies <laughs> and I don't work with people abroad, so why would it be relevant? Uh, but now I think this, this has changed. We have the power to shape globalization and in that sense I think it is important to put more at the, front, at the forefront equality and solidarity, both within, for instance, our world region, Europe, but also between world regions. <laughs>